This video made possible by the ICC Stellar Surveyors and subscribers like you. Hey everybody, welcome to Around the Verse. I'm Sandy Gardner. I'm Ben Lesnick. And this week on the ATV interview, Jared sits down with Pete Mackey and John Pritchett to discuss upcoming changes with Star Citizen's flight model. And we take a look at the audio work that brought the ARC star map to life. But first... Star Citizen Alpha Patch 1.3 is live for everybody and I hear that people have been going nuts in their buggies. Uh, the buggies are a little buggy. Um, but it's helping us test a lot of the collision mechanics and other interesting things. Uh, 1.3 is uh, largely a behind the screens patch. It's got, uh, it's the post merge patch. All the different development streams that have been disparate these past few months are finally together. There's some other stuff for backers to play with in there though. We've expanded uh, our corp beyond the original design. There's a, a new area to explore. We've added the buggies of course. There's uh, two new guns uh, available through Voyager Direct. Um, and mounts to use them with. So uh, folks seem to be having lots of fun and we are uh, on the road to 2.0. We are on the road to 2.0 and look forward to giving you an update on that and Star Marine tomorrow. Mm. And yesterday we had our special October subscriber edition of Reverse the Verse with members of the Santa Monica art team. That was a lot of fun. You know, if we could live stream 24-7 we would. Um, but we uh, can't. I'm not sure people would want to see that though. No, well, <laughs> yeah, people want to see me like getting ready for bed. And All right. <laughs> you remember the first 24-hour, uh, or we did a couple of 24 yeah. hours, I think. Uh, that, that first one in uh, November, though, that was something. Is we that all... the one where Fred showed up with the disco lights? Yes, okay. we all flew to Austin. Yeah. That was... yeah. Ben talks about how awesome that was. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> we were doing so well. The community team is coming to Austin, and I hope maybe I can come, but I'm not sure yet. We will be filming an entire episode in Austin two weeks from now. Oh yeah, we're gonna catch up with the guys in Austin. You, know, you, you folks see the Santa Monica team pretty much every week. We want to uh, share the love, show you some of the work folks in Austin and eventually elsewhere are doing on Star Citizen. Mm -hmm. And I hear that there is a Bar Citizen group on November 8th at 7, no, 7 p.m. Sorry, at Red's Porch in Austin. Yes, there is. Nailed it. Wow, Ben adds flavor. <laughs> Just don't do too much there because you know, what flavor. don't oversell it. <laughs> now let's turn it over to news from around the verse. Ka ciao! Hey, and uh, welcome back to Santa Monica. Uh, you're here with Eric Kyron Davis, and I have a special guest with us for this around the verse. Uh, this is Vince Sinatra, he's our QA lead here in LA. Uh, real quick, I want, as before we get into our topics, I was going to ask, what are you going to do for us out here now that you're here? Well, I'm pretty much here to help the studio any way I can. Uh, primary focus will probably be on, you know, ship design, ship building, uh, making sure the performance is all up to specs the way it's supposed to be. Awesome. That's great. Uh, and the other couple things happening in the studio, uh, we've got a lot going on. Um, upstairs, uh, our own uh, Elwin Bacher, he's working hard on the Constellation Merlin Docking Bay to get that thing all done. LODs are rocking and rolling as well. And we also have Randy, he's uh, working on Caterpillar Tech Design as well. So that's our quick update for Around the, uh, around the Verse from Santa Monica. You've met Vince, and we'll see you next week. Hey guys, Jake Ross here, associate producer of the Persistent Universe, and uh, I'm here with you this week to talk a little bit about what we got going on in the PU. Uh, I took a break when I was off for a week in the Smoky Mountains. That was lots of fun, so thanks for Jason Hutchins for filling in. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about shopping UI. Uh, we are kind of undergoing a revamp on the UI side of things for shopping. Um, you know, we have a uh, uh, Tony working with Zane and uh, Carl Jones, a designer in the UK, to um, to kind of revamp how the shopping interface works. So, uh, as we work towards our shopping milestone, um, you guys will be able to see some kind of previs of, of a little bit of that. Um, you know, the, the shopping user interface flow, how it, how it looks. You know, uh, we we kind of got a good idea now of how shopping is actually going to work uh, from start to finish. So. Um, you know, we were, had, we were there for a little while and then uh, kind of broke down and 
uh, and now we've got some some new people coming in with some cool ideas. So uh, yeah, so that's coming in, coming along nicely. Uh, we've also got uh, Cassava Outlet, a uh, new clothing store in the works. Uh, you guys, I think, have seen some concepts uh, of that of that space and. Um, now we are actually to the point now where we have it all laid out nicely. It's all white boxed, um, and we can take it through to final art. Uh, we, we need to make sure that you know players had enough room to to move around. Um, you know, act, to actually access the clothing on the racks, and um, that there wasn't enough. You know, there wasn't like really tiny spaces where you couldn't get around people. So we need to make sure everything was laid out really nicely. So Rob Reiniger here in here in Austin uh, handled that. So uh, that's now off to behavior. They're gonna do, they're gonna art it up and make it look all pretty, and uh, you you guys will get to experience that and the shopping user interface uh, all in the same go here uh, in the near future. Um, last but not least, we're working on some camera dampening, first person camera dampening for the emotes that you guys have already have out in social module. Uh, we've got heard, heard some complaints of uh, some rocking uh, first person camera motion uh, <laughs> as you guys uh, dance and uh, salute and uh, a little bit more of the crazier uh, animations, the camera goes a little crazy. Uh, so we're dampening some of that so that you don't barf every time you uh, dance on the dance floor. So uh, there's that. So look forward to that. Um, yeah, that's uh, all I got for you this week. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tom. And I'm Simon. And we've been working on Star Citizen Alpha 2.0. Uh, you might have seen it at CitizenCon when Chris demoed it on stage. Uh, Simon, what have you been working on? Um, so I've been working on the first pass of the repair systems that we have in place. You may have seen the little gyroscopic robot guys that kind of pop out and come along and fix up your ship. Um, so it's very much important to us that we get a first pass of these guys into you. Um, so this isn't what we will eventually be in the game for repair. It will be a much more involved process, much more physical. You getting your hands dirty um, with the bits and pieces of your ship and making sure that you are fixing it up yourself. Um, I but, think for now it, it really adds to the sort of continuity of the experience though, having mm. you know having the ability to go out, get in a load of trouble and then visit these stations and get repaired you know yeah. as part of the game as yeah. opposed to exactly sort of... it's it's um, we've, we're doing something really new for us here we're delivering something to you and we want to get you back in the game and exploring as quickly as possible. So it's important that we get something in but not something that will take huge amounts of time when it's not the final thing but yeah and I've been working on creating background events that sort of help show the player the, the, the state of the system that they're in. Um, so when you visit certain locations, like these refuel and repair stations, um, there's a chance that something will spawn in the background that sort of some AI ships or, or something that just helps show you, you know, uh, what kind of traffic happens normally through, through that part of the world, or part of the galaxy, I should say. Um, so for example, in the, in the map uh, that we've been making for 2.0, there's a sort of big conflict going on between the uh, the pirates in the system and the UEE forces. Uh, so there's quite a lot of scenarios that can spawn that will be a, a, a UEE patrol moving through the area, or perhaps a pirate ambush, or just you know normal independent traders trying to get on with their lives. Um, all the ships will react, all AIs will react sort of systemically with each other. So if a, a, if a patrol ship sees a pirate, it'll try and attack it and take it down. If a pirate sees a trader, it'll try and pirate it and steal its cargo. Uh, the really nice thing about it as well is, you know, if a ship takes damage and it's coming in to land at one of the one of the refuel and repair platforms, you know, it'll refuel as normal. But Simon's little drones will come out as well and they'll repair AI ships just the same as they would a player ship. So it, it really is sort of a fully functioning little diorama yep. of, of what the game will eventually become. Exactly, and these, uh, as you say, these, these systems are going to be things that we're going to be iterating on and expanding on and kind of just making the world much more complex and rich and for you guys to explore, and we can't wait for you to be able to do that. Yeah, so, can't wait to have yeah. it in your hands. Cool. Right then, um, well, see you in the verse. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, Brian Chambers from the Frankfurt office. Um, this week, instead of sitting down and talking to you in front of the camera, We'll run you around the new office, uh, but quick, because we only have a few minutes. So here we go. Entrance way. Hey, Zenas. Say hi. Hi. Uh, large conference room. Outside of the lobby, down here, here's the main corridor. Just got some artwork hung on the walls the other day. 
Here is our kitchen slash lounge. I'd say hi to Marco, but he probably wouldn't like that. I'll follow him around. Say hi, Marco. Uh, hi. <laughs> All right, uh, restroom, restroom, boring. A couple more images. Here's the engineers, they have to be quiet. It's a IT room. Say hi, Mars. Hi. Uh, it's a server room in there. Can't show you that if it gets locked right now. Yeah, it's locked. And here's the main floor with everybody. That's kind of a good view. We have an outside area here too where we can uh, eat if we want for lunch and they have barbecues we can pull out. Um, there's my office. We have meetings. Some of the guys you've seen, some new guys, some new faces. This meeting room. This is where we usually shoot the ATV every week. Um, more dudes over here, I'll go quick so we can't see everything. More dudes, there's Jason, Frank, there's Autry, new uh, senior tech artist, Caleb Hayden in the corner, Todd, Toby, Alex Hayden in the corner, you remember Alex? He refuses to do all these videos with me. There's Steve. This way, so we're just trying to get Cool, so <laughs> short and sweet, but that's our new space. Um, we're up to 30 people now. Space can hold 49 right now, so uh, got a bunch of good applicants still coming through. Um, yeah, cool. Hope to uh, show you more next week. Cheers. As always, a big thank you to our studios from around the world. Now let's head over to our community manager, Jared Huckabee, who's chats with game designer Pete Mackey and physics programmer John Pritchett to talk flight models in this week's ATV interview. <laughs> Hey everybody, there's been a lot of talk lately about upcoming changes to the flight model. Uh, so with me today are game designer Pete Mackey and physics programmer John Pritchett and we're going to talk a little bit about the upcoming flight post that we hope to have out later today and uh, basically give you a kind of a, a, a top level summary of what you can expect and what, what we're going to do going forward. So Pete, uh, John, how you guys doing? Good, how are you? Good. All right, so. Let's start off by talking about the flight model as it is now. Uh, how, did, how did we come up with the flight model that exists in the game today? Okay, uh, the two main goals that I had uh, from the very beginning for our flight model were um, basically to make sure that our flight behavior was nice and smooth. You know, for space flight, you want that to, to really feel like the ships have a lot of inertia. Uh, and then the second thing is for it to be uh, highly uh, dynamic and adaptable to uh, a lot of, you know, variations and errors, uh, you know, unexpected conditions that we might encounter, you know, because we, we uh, from the very beginning, we expected to have, um, you know, thruster damage and, and um, things like that uh, that kind of feed into the system. And I didn't want to have to micromanage that. So, um, you know, it seemed pretty obvious in the beginning I wanted to develop this as a, as a real kind of a feedback control type system. Uh, and so that's what I did. The, uh, the feedback control algorithm uh, is basically an exponential uh, type of, a, of a, an acceleration control or motion control. So um, that gives us, you know, something better than instantaneous acceleration change that you would have with normal second order. Uh, motion, so the, you know our accelerations don't jump from zero to maximum in an instant. They actually change more gradually. Um, so, kind of the downside of that is that 
you know, the exponential uh, settle time can be very long, and, and players have definitely noticed that in the, in the long settle times for the ship as, you know, you go from maximum velocity down to zero. And so that's, that's something I wanted to improve on. Gotcha. Pete, what do you think about the current flight model? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, mainly what uh, players have reported in some cases that it feels sloppy, and that's, and that's you know, kind of the side effect that you get from it, the exponential curve is that it's just a bit of extra slop at the tail. <laughs> All right. So uh, it's been a while. We've had this flight model for well over a year now. Uh, what makes now the time to change it? Do you want me to answer that? Yeah, go for it. Okay, well, I mean, you know, it um, took a little time to get it out there in front of people and just kind of start getting the feedback and realize, you know, what it was that we did need to change. Um, so, but then, you know, having realized that, you know, I didn't want to take a step back at all in terms of the quality of the motion and, and the, uh, the adaptability of it as well. So uh, it took a little while to come up with the, the proper solution. Uh, you know, what, what, we, what I came up with was... Uh, you know, to use uh, third order motion so we have uh, a change in acceleration. It doesn't assume that the acceleration can change instantaneously. Uh, and so, you know, it just took a little time to get that uh, functioning mm -hmm. fully with the, the complex system that we have. <laughs> the very complex system we have. Now, this was something that was always going to happen. This isn't like a new idea we had a couple weeks ago. You know, the game development is iterative. This was always going to be right. the next step at some point. Well, actually, I mean, uh, going back to the, from the beginning, I had hoped that um, I could just, you know, use the system uh, as a feedback system. So whenever, you know, your input changes your velocity, we would set a new set point for velocity. And then the air, the feedback control system would just sort of smooth out the air between your current velocity and your new velocity. But um, that's what sort of introduced that lag time that we see and the sloppiness in the behavior. So, you know, having recognized that uh, the goal was to go ahead and to introduce a more optimal uh, motion profile to, you know, to take full advantage of the acceleration and the velocity that the ship has available to it so that it can change, you know, from one state to the other in the least amount of time and, and optimize for what the ship can do. So, And um, as far as the time it's taken... Um, this is something that we've, uh, me and John have been talking about. I mean, we've had initial conversations about it, you know, going back to uh, December or so of last year. Mm. Um, and then we officially pitched it to Chris in, I think, April or May. Uh, and then we got the green light to start working on it. Um, so it's really been just since May that we've been like, you know, full on developing this, this mm -hmm. you know, the full, not just this third order motion that we're talking about right now, but the whole, right, the whole package of you know what we're calling IFCS 2.0. Gotcha. Uh, great segue. So let's talk about what's coming with with uh, with 2.0. Uh, who wants to start? So on top of uh, the work that John's been doing on uh, the motion control algorithms, uh, we're also doing a bunch of other. Uh, gameplay improvements. Um, we're adding three new flight modes uh, to IFCS, uh, and what that gives us is uh, a lot, uh, a lot more control in various uh, circumstances. So the the three that we we have are uh, precision flight mode, which puts a cap on your maximum velocity, and then scales your acceleration based on your throttle input. So it gives you a lot more control when you're near a landing pad or uh, mining an asteroid or performing salvage like any of those scenarios would be where you might want to use <laughs> uh, precision control mode uh, and then we have um, uh, scm mode which is called uh, space combat maneuvering mode and on the surface it's pretty similar to the the space flight mode that we have in the current currently release game um it uh it basically is your normal combat mode and the, the, but the main difference is that whereas before your top speed was um, statically defined um, now top speed is uh, dynamically determined by uh, your accelerations so anything that alters your 
uh, capability to accelerate can potentially alter your uh, maximum speed. So anything that changes your mass, like through loadouts or adding cargo, um, upgrading your thrusters, these will now potentially change your, your the maximum speed that you're allowed to fly at. So mm -hmm. it's fully dynamic. Um, and then the uh, third mode is cruise mode, which basically uh, we say in, for SCM mode, it really is about what how much speed you can control with the thrusters that you have. Mm -hmm. uh, with cruise mode, it's about uh, velocity at the expense of that control. We basically say, okay, you realize that you know going these velocities near any other object is hazardous to your health, but here here you go, you can do it. So uh, in in cruise mode. Um, the maximum velocities are significantly higher than SEM mode. Uh, right now, all the ships are right around a thousand meters a second in cruise mode. We're still, you know, fine tuning that, trying to trying to figure out what's actually really going to work for for the PU. But right now, they're all around a thousand. Uh, and um, at that velocity, it's really easy to black out and it's really hard to recover from a slide. So what we do is we enforce turn rate limiting, which means that uh, your ship rotation is locked to your velocity vector. So um, maneuvering at cruise mode is less about turning and more about just making course corrections. Course corrections. Yeah, so that's definitely you don't want it to use it, you know, in an asteroid field or near, a, you know, place where there's a ton of other ships flying around. Challenge accepted. <laughs> oh, and the, the one other thing that I did forget to mention is along with SCM mode is that we have uh, we have afterburner. Um, yeah, we get that with, with the way the SCM is calculated. So because SCM, uh, your speed will dynamically raise in relation to your available acceleration. And because boost raises your available acceleration, now your top speed will also dynamically raise. So the way that that works is in afterburner mode, you'll get a, uh, a boost of speed and maintain the same relative control of your ship mm -hmm. at that new speed. Um, but we also know that boost itself is very useful. Um, because it gives you a lot of control, uh, slide control near asteroids and what have you. Mm -hmm. uh, so we didn't want to lose that functionality. So we actually now have both of these modes, the afterburner mode and the, the boost mode, where in, in the boost mode, we don't allow, we give you the acceleration boost without raising the cap on your velocity. So you get uh, more acceleration, but the same speed, which results in better control. And then in afterburner, you get the same control at a higher velocity. So now you actually have this choice uh, of how, how you can spend your boost fuel. Do you want to spend it in afterburner or do you want to spend it in bo boost? And uh, both of them are available uh, with the press of a button at any time. That's cool. So I, 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 I guess this means there's going to be some UI changes for the new systems, I would imagine. Yeah, we have some new changes uh, that uh, Zane and the uh, UI department's been working on um, that will kind of help along with that they'll show your current flight mode they'll show you the flight mode that you'll be switching into next when you use the flight mode button um but i th think and i don't want to speak for zane but i think he actually has some more long-term plans oh, uh <laughs> to actually yeah to to make this uh to to fully display uh, all of the capabilities of the system yeah, I'm going to try to hunt down some screenshots. If we don't have them ready for the time the post or this video goes up, guys, uh, you'll see them when 2.0 drops. They're really cool. They're really cool. <laughs> uh, now, the post is very long. We're not going to cover everything in the post. You know, leave something to read. Uh, John, I wanted to get uh, some words about uh, error before, before we, we turn in for the night here. Uh, what can you tell us about the, the error system? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, one of the issues we have uh, up to this point with the system is really just uh, it, it's too perfect. You know, uh, the motion can be so mechanical looking that it just it obviously seems like a computer game. So mm -hmm. um, a major you know, goal of the system from the beginning was to uh, to have the ability to deal with unexpected conditions and error conditions. And so, you know, we're starting to really kind of take advantage of that now where 
you know, you have the, the third order motion profile that I said, that, you know, that I'm using now that tells you how the ship should move, but there's no expectation that the ship will actually move that way uh, for a number of reasons. And uh, so one of those, those things would be, um, you know, imperfections in, in thruster response, uh, mm-hmm. and that can increase as thrusters become damaged. So you may, you may tell the thruster to thrust on a certain vector at a certain level, but it's not going to do that perfectly. And so that kind of comes back as uh, turbulence in the motion of the ship. And uh, you know, we're kind of working on that as being more or less just a cosmetic thing, just kind of a, a, a nuance. We don't really want it to, to uh, be a major impact on how the flight, you know, the flight control works for players. And so that's something we need to tune over time, but uh, that's the goal with it. We just, you know, we want the ship to kind of have a little bit of movement and just not seem so stiff. Yeah. And we want every ship to, to have its own personality, not just in its right. look, but in its flight characteristics as well. Definitely. So, yeah, cool. So, um, going forward, this is not the end of flight balance changes. This is just the beginning of the next phase. So um, we're going to throw up a a forum post on the forums where folks can give their feedback on on the new flight model experience that they have when 2.0 drops. And uh, you guys have graciously agreed to pop in from time to time and and answer some folks' concerns, get the the feedback directly from them, you know, find out what's relevant and what what you can incorporate and what goes along with your design direction. Um, What can folks do to help you going forward? Uh, well, we're, we'll be looking at all of the feedback, um, whether it's specifically, you know, dir- directed to us or just, you know, maybe offhanded comments people make. Uh, but, but basically, you know, one, we, uh, let me back up a little bit. The, the, the change from, from the current exponential model to the third order model is quite significant in terms of feel, um, even giving the ships the exact same performance uh, in terms of how much time it takes to complete an action, the feel of that, uh, it's not even really possible to make them mimic each other because it's com- so different. So the the feel of the ships is definitely going to change. And so we definitely want to use that to give each ship their own personality. So we'll be looking at, you know, uh, really on two different, you know, vectors. One, does the gameplay balance work for the ships? Uh, and two, do the ships feel like, you know, does, you know, if you have two ships that are tuned to be identical in terms of uh, flight performance, do they still have their own personalities? Can you tell just by sitting down to the controls that it feels like you're flying two different ships? Uh, so those are the two main things that we're going to be, you know, uh, looking at so it, you know any feedback that we get on that is is gold. Gotcha. So yeah. be sure you you, uh, you include what ship you're flying. Um, once the item uh, system is in, you can start swapping out components like thrusters. Be sure you, you include your loadouts, and uh, yeah, and we're always reading. Yeah, definitely. I know I am. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, the post will go up uh, later today, and, and this video should be embedded in that post in case you didn't watch it in ATV today. Uh, John, Pete, thank you so much for taking the time to arrange this uh, video conference call to do this. It's, it's not always the easiest thing to do across the country, but I'm glad we made it work. And uh, thanks, guys. Do you want, right, thank you. All right. thank you. <laughs> We're just going to end it here because I'm done with talking. <laughs> Take care, everybody. All right. Thanks, guys. I guess with changes to the flight model, maybe Ben will stand a chance when we play. Ben retorts, talks up the flight model post later today. Mm-hmm. Talk it up, Ben. <laughs> this is one we know a lot of folks out there have been waiting for, the uh, great big star citizen flight model post. It's talking about some of the changes that have gone into 1.3, some of the changes you'll see in 2.0, and some of our uh, hopes and dreams for the future in terms of uh, star citizen's flight model. Uh, I know Calix and uh, Pete and uh, John put a whole lot of work into this. Please check it out and uh, tear it apart on the forums. Next up, the ARC star map has been nominated for web awards across the internet, including winning the CSS Design Awards. This week, the uh, ATV Behind the Scenes takes a look at the audio work that went into that from the folks in the UK. Hey, I'm uh, Phil Smallwood. I'm one of the junior sound designers here at Foundry 42. When we were tasked up with uh, designing sound for the star map, 
me and Matt kind of sat down, we were both brought on board and we kind of divvied up the assets half and half. Um, happy to uh, kind of com combine our forces. One of the first things I was tasked with was the uh, one of the jump points. Um, it, it, what that is, it's like a wormhole that you travel from one place uh, through to another. Um, so uh, that came out like this. Cool. Uh, so the way I went about designing that uh, to start with is pulling in a bunch, a bunch of sounds from our copious amounts of libraries that we've got, laying them all in a row here. Um, so as you can see in the markers, I've got some wind, some rumbles, thunder, uh, stuff like that. I actually got some sounds from the, the Rosetta Stone uh, comet that would sound pretty cool, but couldn't use them for copyright reasons. <laughs> so what I wanted to try and achieve was have an elemental aspect to it. Um, as well as uh, you can have more digital aspect because uh, it is a digital rep representation of space and these connections between these galaxies. But I needed to give it some weight, but also can have some sci-fi to it as well. So very much elemental with or like a UI element to it. Well, uh, the first thing I did obviously it was listening to the sound uh, that feel already created. So what I do typically is just drag in a bunch of assets. Um, and then just process them a touch to bring out some um, different, almost kind of sci-fi elements of them. Um, so typically I'll just bring like an explosion here. That's cool. And then I'll just bring up like a processing chain. Um, I'm a big fan of like Crystallizer uh, and the FabFilter plugins, they're, they're great, uh, especially uh, Volcano, uh, that's a great plugin, uh, just to add some uh, extra texture to the, uh, to the sound. Um, I'm on Mateo's machine, he's not got my R verb, so I can't, <laughs> can't even activate yeah, that I, one. Yeah, I got, I got less plugins than everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's alright, we'll sort you out, we'll sort you out. Yeah. That's fine. Um, so after starting messing with them, let's see if I can find some of the cooler sounding explosions that I've got. Is that one of them there? That's just processed. Thunder. Where are they? Uh, let's try that one. So that's got a bit of chorus on that. Uh, I think that came from the volcano. And then old school just started making some whooshes. Old school trick of just getting like an explosion and then just uh, duplicating it and reversing it. I try not to think too much about it and just like create some sound and see and see how well it goes with the actual images. Um, one problem that we had at the beginning is that we when when we create the sounds, um, especially like Phil when he created the um, the jump points and the, the zooming and the zoom out of the solar system, they were way too powerful once after that we put the music in, um, which again, the music is so drony and ambient -y. So when we put our sounds, it, was, it, sound, it sounded like it was a bit too powerful, so we had to actually go back and tweak them out. So what we have here is just like, um, it's a combination of different sounds. Uh, I usually, on the free time, I, I try to create my own sounds and, um, and just like bounce them out and reuse them whenever I need it. So that's the case for these sounds over here, which actually has been renamed Sci-Fi Weapon. Um, I designed this sound specifically for, um, for drawing up a weapon, so it has that sci-fi element. But when I went back and when I went to look back to the, the sound design that I did previously, like a few days ago, I kind of liked this one and uh, yeah, I just wanted to be it to be there. Uh, the other layer is usually, it's a combination of different um, synthesizers. Um, basically, mostly, I use Massive um, more than anyone else. When we start uh, designing sound for the star map, we basically were given a list of placeholder assets that we had to start replacing. There wasn't really a, a priority order uh, in which we had to do it. Um, but what we kind of did is went through and found that the coolest visual things in the map 
And I was like, well, I'll do that first. Uh, so I got the jump point. So I did that and a couple of the zooms in and zoom out. Uh, and then between me and Mateo, we kind of just uh, divvied up the rest of the assets. Um, but yeah, we kind of dealt with the coolest ones first. And again, there is no, um, it's, it's kind of difficult to go back to what, what we actually did. Because um, basically what, what, we did most of, what, we, what we do most of the time, we just like hit the recording button and just like start glitching stuff. And so that you just come out with, with you know, this little really long regions and you just go back and listen to it and start cutting it up. Yeah. Um, so you choose all the cool elements basically and then just start piling them. It seems like there's an element of performance in it, isn't there, really? It's kind of, you, you just let and reaper uh, record, and you just uh, change parameters and plugins and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. You know, a lot of it's happy accidents, but a lot of it is kind of really p trying to perform what you want. Yeah. But the difficulty is when you want to try and recreate it, it's like, well, what was I doing? What kind of frame of mind yeah. was I in? Yeah, like, exactly. Uh, what, what, what settings was, was I manipulating? We kind of wanted to push it into a, a, almost like a new direction. There were some things you, you pull back on, uh, some pop culture references and stuff like that. Again, there's not, there's not rules and, and since we're talking about sound in space, um, you just want to make it kind of a beautiful artistic piece that goes well with the music rather than, um, rather than trying to go you know, too, um, rather than trying to go too specific. It's a Mario up in the middle and create something that's special. This is Alan Nuevo from the Empire Report with some breaking news. We've just begun receiving reports that a large industrial explosion has occurred on Mars. We now go to Victoria Hutchins, who was on another assignment when the explosion occurred. Victoria? That's right, Alan. Uh, it was about an hour ago that I was awoken, along with many others in Port Renatus, by a loud explosion. While details are still unconfirmed, a large plume of smoke appears to be rising from the Shubin Interstellar Refinery, who runs a very busy geological operation here. Again, no further details about the extent of the damage or injuries have been made public as of yet. Back to you, Ellen. Thank you, Victoria. Keep it here for further details as they come in and expect a full update on tonight's Empire Report, 2462. I hope everyone is okay on Port Retainus. Retainus? I just met us. No? And, oh. no. and now it's time for this week's MVP. Come on, Ben, give us the envelope. Here you go. Here we go. Who is it? It's the Stargazer, who flew as part of the French Space Agency and brought along his Constellation model to fly in zero G. Check it out. Yep. She took my line. Check it out. That's not your line. Where does it say that's your no, line? No, it says bad as color. Oh. Color. Orange. We'd also like to thank the members of Operation Pitchfork for sending in signed copies of their operations manual. Why, that's the operations manual right here. Um, they, they sent us a whole bunch of copies uh, to our writers and Chris and everybody. It's, it's a really cool manual. It even has like the, the different patches that they've created. Uh, Pitchfork is a pretty cool project. Yeah that we they, look forward to slaughtering very, mercilessly. They are a very organized organization. Because mm -hmm. I, got, I got a pin at the um, Citizen Con, and uh, we all have t-shirts here in the mm -hmm. office. They're, they're on it. Ben says something. Say something, Ben. I, I think you did I say, something. say something. Yeah. Ah. And finally, here's your art sneak peek. <laughs> Be sure to tune in to Reverse the Verse tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific on Twitch. 
We'll be talking about that art sneak peek and uh, all sorts of other stuff you can peek at. Of course, thank you as always to subscribers for making this show possible. We will see you next week on Around the Verse. Around the Verse. With Ben's new haircut. My sporty new haircut. Mm -hmm. Um, so you guys have seen all the uh, exciting Grey Cat Buggy action in uh, our corp. Uh, some of you may know that the, uh, the actual Grey Cat company is named after my parents' Grey Cat, named Grey Cat, and uh, my dad was kind enough to send some video of her so you can see the uh, namesake of the buggy. Here it is. <laughs> I'm not horrified though, I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> you would. Yeah, you would.